welcome to another episode of Gotta Run With Will. I'm your host, Isong Smith. I've had the honor of being invited back onto the show to interview the co-authors of Run Healthy, the runner's guide to injury prevention and treatment. Already praised as a must-have resource for runners, Run Healthy provides the latest science-based guidance for identifying, treating, and minimizing the most common injuries in track, road, and trail running. Today, our special guests include the authors Allison Goldstein and Emmy Aguilard. I also wish to recognize author Jonathan Kane, who couldn't be here today, but whom I look forward to sharing more about as we move into the show. Our special guest, author Allison Goldstein, is a writer and editor with dual degrees in English and Cognitive Sciences. She is also a competitive runner and raced in the 2020 Olympic Trials Marathon. Her work has appeared in Runner's World, Women's Running, Bicycling, Popular Mechanics, and other publications. Our other special guest is co-author Emmy Aguilard, a full-time physical therapist who earned her doctorate in physical therapy from Columbia University. She coaches a 900-member Dashing Whippets running team, works with Matt Wilpers as a Team Wilpers coach, and manages her private practice specializing in treating and training runners. And lastly, while he is not here today with us, a special shout out to Jonathan Kane, the co-founder and head coach of City Coach Multisport. Kane has been coaching endurance athletes for over 30 years. He holds a master's degree in exercise physiology from Adelphi University and has coached for Nike, Jackrabbit, and Under Armour. Kane is also the co-author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Weight Training and has written for Metro Sports Magazine, New York Runner, and Triathlete Magazine. He has also been a featured speaker for Nike, New York Roadrunners, Chelsea Piers Triathlon Club, Hospital for Special Surgery, and more. And now, without further ado, let's learn more from the authors. Allison and Emmy, this book, what a gift to the running world. How did all three of you guys connect on this idea? So it actually was a recruited effort. Jonathan <laughs> Kane had worked with our publisher, Human Kinetics, previously on another book. And I think they approached him with the idea to do something about running injuries. And so he came, I think, to Emmy first. And he, because he needed a physical therapist, you can't write a book about running <laughs> injuries without a professional. And then he was going to contribute the sort of training elements. And then she would, of course, contribute pretty much the whole book, but especially the recovery elements. And then he decided that it would be a wise idea if there's already two authors to bring on a third that could kind of corral everything and make sure it was a cohesive book. Mm -hmm. And that was my role. That's why it brought me on. Excellent. All right. And yeah. Anything for contributing to that origin story? It took a little bit while to get going. And I think the book would never, would probably still not be done to this day if it were not for Allison. So it was definitely a great team effort. How'd you get into running? So I have been running for pretty much my whole life. I think I joined the middle school track team when I was in sixth grade. Ran in high school, ended up getting a scholarship to college. I ran at Tulane University um, where I competed D1 on the cross country and track team there. Moved to New York City right after I graduated from Tulane and ended up joining the Dashing Whippets, which is the team that I'm still on and help with their coaching. I feel like such a steady like presence in my life. Like when I moved to New York, it was a great way to like meet people and kind of get involved. And it just like, after I graduated from Columbia and was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my physical therapy career, I ended up getting a job offer from Finish Line Physical Therapy, which is a huge running clinic here in the city. And I was like, yes, I will do that. You know, working with runners is always something that's been like near and dear to my heart. And I think it came to me like so naturally. There's not that many places in the country that like specialize in running rehab the way that Finish Line did. So that was just like such an awesome way to start my career and it's gotten me to where I am today. Yeah. And then Allison? Yeah, I came to running a little later than oh. Emmy. I played a bunch of sports pretty poorly throughout my childhood growing up. Um, well, consistent one was swimming. And so I did that through college. But then when I moved to New York initially, I needed a sport that was very accessible mm -hmm. and very cheap. And so I met some runners at my first job at Wiley, uh, which is an academic publisher. And they ran at lunchtime, which seemed like the perfect way to spend your lunch. Yeah. While they were training for, I think it was the Philadelphia Half Marathon. And as I was doing what they were doing, I realized, you know, I could also maybe do this race because I was doing the same things as them. 
And so, yeah, so I did it and that was the first one. And I thought after that, oh my gosh, I will do a marathon. It will be my lifetime achievement. I will have completed a whole marathon. Um, so I trained for the Pittsburgh Marathon, just following like an online run schedule. It was really hard, uh, but I, I discovered that it was something I was kind of good at, or at least other people told me that I was kind of good at. And then all of a sudden I got excited and thought, oh, you know, what else could I do? And eventually I met my first coach on my first team, which was Gotham City Runners. And it turned into a great way to meet people. Like um, Emmy said, it's, it's such a community here in New York City. I think it's, I don't, I haven't lived anywhere else in the country other than Pittsburgh where I grew up, but it's such a unique community here. And you just meet so many different people. And it was such a great way to just know people and get to see different places in the city. So that was a wonderful experience and I love competing. And this turned out to be something that I actually could compete in, which was so exciting. Just eventually I transitioned over to Distance Project, which is the team I'm on now, an all women's running team. I spent several years training to qualify for the Olympic trials in 2020, which was just the most phenomenal experience. I'm just so fortunate. It took a lot of hard work and my coach, Jason Lakritz, and worked with for a while and I can't give him enough credit either. He was crucial to that, but it also takes luck. So I don't want to downplay that either. Yeah. You have to stay injury free. That's very impressive. And thank you so much for sharing that background. I, um, I had to say it is a great community, this running community. Mm -hmm. I shared with you before this that, you know, just how I got connected to Gotta Run With Will, how I got connected. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan Kane, as I had the honor of being coached by him, actually, it, you know, getting to know everyone through the running community, it has been quite a quite a blessing, and uh, I'm very happy to have sort of a, a mini reunion here through this uh, interview. So thank you for sharing that, both of you. Uh, Emmy, you touched upon it a little bit, but just mm -hmm. to be interested in injury prevention and sports recovery, maybe you want to share a little bit more for uh, your practice and how it all came to be. Yeah. I was a public health major in undergrad at Tulane, and I knew I wanted to do something in like the realm of healthcare. Public health was such an interesting major, kind of looking at like health as a whole, very, very like preventative minded and kind of looking like what causes diseases in a community and how can we like have infrastructure in a community to help people stay healthy. Um, and I was kind of trying to figure out what to do after that. Like, do I want to go to grad school for public health or pursue a career in medicine? You know, also as a college athlete, I spent a lot of time in the training room dealing with a lot of various sports injuries. I had stress fractures, tendonitis, you know, kind of have been up and down, plantar fasciitis, um, have had my fair share of running injuries. And, you know, that kind of opened my doors to the world of physical therapy. And I really, really liked how with PT, there's a lot of different areas you could go into. You could work with stroke clients, you could work with pediatrics, you could specialize in working with athletes. And so I moved to New York, started at Columbia, um, was involved. There was a couple like running electives that we had while I was there. And then it just kind of like worked itself out. Like as I was sort of trying to decide like what patient population I wanted to work with, the one thing that I felt so strongly about with working with runners is that like level of empathy that I have working with these people who are like who I am. You know, like I get how important running is. I get how it's more than just being able to get out there every day for your run. It's so important for your mental health. Um, you know, I myself have used running to kind of get through various challenging periods in life. And I think having that outlet is just like so empowering. I think it translates to so many other areas of your life um, as far as, you know, discipline and worth ethic. And you can really see in a very black and white way, how like the hard work that you put in can result in something very tangible. And so, you know, working with those patients who have, you know, been to other doctors, other physical therapists who are like, you know, they just told me to stop running, but you don't understand, like, that's not an option. Like I need to run and I'm like, I totally get it. Like we're gonna get you there. So it's been like kind of work that almost doesn't feel like work. It's it just like, yeah, I don't know. I, I really, really love it. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I know specific to uh, this book, and I'm sure you'll both jump into mm -hmm. more, say, injury prevention techniques and recovery. Uh, Allison, is there anything maybe that I know you mentioned the origin story with Kane corralling you all or mm -hmm. helping you helping corral in the ideas, uh, but for injury prevention itself and recovery, uh, what kind of got you interested, I suppose, not just with this book, but maybe that topic as well? I'm exactly the patient that Emmy's talking about where I would come in and, you know, just stopping was 
tenable for a short term, but if you know they just don't ever run again, like that's just not a good option for someone when they love running. So inspired my interest in recovery and physical therapy and injury prevention. The other side that I just want to touch on quickly is that my interest in writing about running in general comes from a place of interest in science. Um, I'm always very interested in why things work or don't work. Um, and science studies, um, scientists, practitioners, they're all just really interesting people to talk to and have so much wisdom to share. And so that I've done that for outlets like Runner's World, you know, sort of short form. And this was an opportunity to do it more long form and really like delve into the brains of Emmy and Jonathan and extract all of that interesting wisdom. So, yeah. In terms of the actual techniques, do you have any favorite injury prevention techniques or alternative therapies that you'd want to expand upon and share with any of the viewers today? I would say that my tried and true sort of injury prevention technique is the lunge matrix. Nice. Uh, which I learned from <laughs> Jason. Jason, which in short order is doing several lunges before you start running as a warm up slash mobility uh, technique. And it's called a matrix because you do it in three directions. So you do it laterally, mm -hmm. <laughs> you do it forward and backward, and then you in runner parlance, you do it side Maybe to side, yeah. and, and then you turn. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 360. And thank you. Yes. <laughs> nice. It's quick. It's easy, it makes you feel like you're doing something because I feel like sometimes when you're trying to do things to activate prior to running, it doesn't feel like anything's happening. You can do it anywhere as long as you can stand in a little, you know, you can do it in like a corral if you have enough space. So yeah, that's why it's my favorite. It's a good one, that might become my favorite too. <laughs> nice, I try out. So uh, anything that you wanted to share, Emmy? I'm definitely interested to hear for what you found has really worked for a lot of your own clients, uh, patients, and then um, yeah, just to see what uh, they can learn more about in this book. First of all, there's like the very simple kind of low hanging fruit runs, which are sleep and like nutrition, hydration. I think if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not fueling well and hydrating well, like you're likely going to get hurt. But I think sometimes, you know, if I'm working with a patient and just not seeing results, it's like, okay, let's let's take a step back. How are your stress levels? Are you sleeping? Are you eating? Um, so I think you kind of can't ignore those kind of simple ones, but very, very basic and they weigh a lot. For more of like a PT kind of rehab perspective, and I think what the book really delves into, I can't emphasize enough the importance of strength training, um, especially as we get older, strength training is so, so important. And then kind of as a professional, it's like, how do we tailor that strength training to running to make the exercises in the strength training like running specific in a way that like you're getting the most bang for your buck. If you're going to the gym, how can you spend your time. We want to be efficient. We want to, if we're going to be in there for 30 minutes, you know, what are the three to four exercises that I can do to get the most bang for my buck? So I think kind of highlighting like the key muscle groups, hamstrings, glutes, calves, kind of lower body core, and really integrating. Like I love exercises that kind of do multiple things where like you're not like you're not working your core in isolation you're not working your calf in isolation when we're running we're not working anything in isolation right we need everything to work together so kind of doing more like complex movements that are efficient and running specific and then i'm also a really big fan of kind of foam rolling i think that that's something that's easy to do at home i would say none of us are like anti-stretching but none of us are like oh my gosh you must stretch that's like the answer to staying healthy but i think spending some time with like the foam roller or your theragun or different types of like massage t tools to kind of decrease knots and tightness and tension in your body can really go a long way and everything kind of working the way it should and helping your body better recover from runs and staying healthy Maybe uh, just to touch on the strength training, I'm mm -hmm. curious to learn more. Do you think for runners, should they be incorporating during their season strength training if they haven't yet? Do you find it's like you better for off season when they start focusing on it? Maybe to expand on that a little? Yeah, that's a great question. I definitely think, you know, obviously if you're in the middle of like a very high mileage, say marathon training cycle, you wouldn't want to just like go zero to 60 with the strength training. So a good time to start if you're new to strength training would maybe be like after your goal race when you are taking a little bit of time off and you can kind of experiment with like how sore you're feeling, kind of getting your muscles to adapt to the lifting a little bit better so the soreness isn't carrying over into like your key workouts and like affecting performance on that front. Um, but I do think if you are in a training cycle, there's a lot you can do that's just like body weight and band work that's kind of easy to do anywhere that's pretty darn safe to incorporate. And then just working with your coach or physical therapist or kind of movement professional about like 
when in the programming it's best to do. Like with a lot of the athletes I work with, um, if time allots, I think it's great if you can do like your hardest workout in the like morning and then maybe de strength that evening or afterwards. So you're like really like making your hard days hard, um, which gives you more time to recover. So you're more recovered before the next hard effort. Or um, if you do, you know, time is always an issue for everyone. So maybe you don't have time to do your hard workout and your strength on the same day. You could do your um, workout on say like a Wednesday and then you do strength the next day. And then you're still giving yourself a little bit more time to recover before the next hard day. Yeah, it sounds like um, to make it more accessible, the idea of strength training, I know for a lot of people mm -hmm. might think right away, get to the gym, do heavy weights. It, it does seem like a lot of us are pressed for time these days. So yeah. if you can incorporate it into your routine and, you know, just even basic things that you might not associate with strength training, yeah. um, it sounds like that would be very helpful for people to consider. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Lately, running strength is really trending towards more of the heavy lifting. I think for a while that was not as emphasized. Um, so I have been encouraging a lot of my patients to try to like load a little heavier when they can. But I don't think that should like dissuade from like how much you can do with like some bands and maybe like a big a gallon of water if you're in New York or sure. you know, some little hand weights can still be like immensely valuable. How about grocery shopping in New York? Yes. That's a, <laughs> I think that honestly, right? I think we I sometimes will walk up to my fifth floor with my grocery bags and I'll yeah. call it a strength day. You there know, you there's See? there's little ways I think in New York that it is we can do functional strength training because mm -hmm. um, we do use our bodies so much on a regular basis. Kind of adding on to that, I mean, in your practice and coaching experience, could you share some examples of common running injuries uh, and what would you recommend to prevent them? I know you touched upon it already kind of with the strength training yeah. and foam rolling, uh, but maybe some specific ones that we know are, are very common. That That's tough. It kind of comes in like seasonal waves. And I wish I could like study like why in, you know, the spring it's all Achilles and then I'll get a knee wave and then I'll see a bunch of hips. Like there's, there's definitely got to be some like weather related pattern to it. But, um, you know, definitely I see knees, I would say is probably one of the most common body parts slash injuries that I work on. And that can range from tendonitis to, you know, patella, chondromalacia of the patella kind of patella femoral pain syndrome. There's a lot of different names that are all fairly similar and, you know, require fairly similar treatments. A lot of calves, Achilles, plantar fasciitis, kind of those go together. And then hips, the three major joints that we have, which is hip, knee, and ankle. And then they each kind of have their little clusters. If we're going to talk about one in particular, that's hard. What do you, do you guys have one maybe that you're a little more curious on? It's it's so hard for me to pick one. Of course, I'm sure because it's, it's a wide range of injuries. Yeah. I think it would be interesting to hear about knees only because mm -hmm. it seems that most of the knee problems aren't knee problems. Correct. They just manifest in the knees. Yeah. So I think that's a misnomer. So maybe you could. Yeah, there's that. we learned um, in some of the training that I've done that it's like it's never the knee's fault, meaning the knee yeah. is such a simple joint. Like it's really just meant to hinge back and forth. But if you have limitations at your ankle, if you have limitations at your hip, if you have weakness in your hip, weakness at the ankle, then the knee is kind of what bears the brunt of that. So I think from a PT perspective, there's a lot we can do with the knee. And I think there's a lot of times, even with like, say, a meniscal tear where a doctor is like, oh, like we can get surgery, we can just kind of snip it out. But oftentimes with the proper rehab, you can avoid those surgeries. Knees, Definitely one thing I see a lot because we're all like sitting and working at computers most of the time, people become very, very quad dominant. So your quads are always kind of on, you're literally like squishing your glutes. Your glutes aren't getting as much blood flow. They're a little kind of like a, a term might be like dehydrated because they're kind of squished. They're just like, they're not firing as much when we run, overworking the quads. So that puts a ton of pressure on the kneecap. And then the glutes aren't working as well as they should to kind of stabilize the pelvis. So you're also like not only overworking the quad, compressing on the knee joint, but also not able to kind of control the motion there. This can also kind of go hand in hand with like overstriding, meaning like taking bigger steps than you should. And that puts a lot of more impact through the leg. So like your heels kind of hitting the ground and the force of the ground is going like straight up your shin, definitely contributing to shin splints, but also putting a lot more pressure on the knee. So some things that can help with that are glute strengthening, glute activation. I work with a lot of my patients on just like kind of some very simple, like takes two or three minute band activation exercises that you can do to just get those glutes a little bit more online before you run. It's amazing how big of a difference that can make. Like two minutes of just kind of like 
firing up your glutes pre-run and how that can like totally transform your form. Stretching, hip flexors, kind of mobilizing the front of the hip, making sure the 3D, um, 3D lunge makes it, matrix that Allison alluded to earlier is a great one for that. And then, you know, again, quads being tighter. I think the foam rolling of the quads, also calves tend to be kind of overworked, like from the posterior chain perspective. If the glutes and hamstrings are a little sleepy, you're going to be getting a lot more of your push off from the calf. So loosening up the calf a little bit, kind of stretching and foam rolling a little bit more your calf, a little bit more your quad can be really helpful for that. Yeah, I think for a lot of runners, I would imagine that when they are experiencing pain, that it's not coming down. It didn't happen in isolation, it sounds like. And so taking a more holistic view and, you know, really kind of asking about mobility, strength, those those types of things I'm, yeah. I'm gathering what they'll find in this book is, you know, consider the whole picture versus yes. limiting it to it just must be my knee. It just yes. must be, um, I think another common one is Achilles stenosis, mm -hmm. right, for, for mm -hmm. what you see probably. So, yeah, um, yeah it's very important to remember it's a, a very big picture of what might be contributing yeah. to that one spot for pain. Yes. So. I think it's so important as a practitioner, and it can be tough, like, you absolutely need to focus on the region that's injured, uh, but you also have to look at the whole picture. And I, I try to, everyone's a little bit different. It's not always split 50-50 of like, okay, 50% on the knee, 50% on the whole body. Um, every injury is a little bit different. Every person's a little bit different, but I think kind of finding the balance between looking at the part and looking at the whole as a practitioner is something that just comes with experience, but like is an important kind of thing to, to do. Yeah. yeah. Allison, I'd like to learn a little bit more for your writing background. Uh, when did you write your first piece on runners or sports in general, if you recall? So I got interested in writing about running after I became a runner, understandably. <laughs> um, and I hadn't really written about sports per se prior to that. But I have to tell a slightly funny story, especially now that Twitter is maybe in its dying days. Um, I met the person that got me into sports writing in general through Twitter because I saw a tweet from him. His name's Scott Douglas. He's a fabulous Runner's World writer and editor. And he was just beginning to write his book called Running is My Therapy, which is about the intersection of running specifically, but also exercise writ large and mental health. And I just saw it. He was looking for help. I don't remember even what his quest question on Twitter asked, but I thought, oh my gosh, this is something I really would love to work on. It's dear to my heart. I for sure think I am quote unquote a self-medicator when it comes to running. Like I just, it's very important to my mental health. So I met him through that. I helped him do some research for that book. I didn't do any writing for it. it was, it's his book. I found out through this, you know, connection that he was an editor for Runner's World. And so eventually, you know, fast forward maybe six months to a year, I met another person named Santino Panico who was working on a documentary about vegan athletes. He's a runner himself. The through line is that he was running the New York City Marathon. And I thought, oh, this would be really interesting to cover for Runner's World. So I went back to my friend Scott and said, you know, is this something that you guys would be interested in? I'd love to write about this. I'd love to include some nutrition facts because I think that that is bringing in the science bench that I always really like to write about. And I'm sure that some runners think, oh, you couldn't possibly fuel just on plants. So I wanted to kind of address that. And, uh, and he acquiesced. And so I wrote that piece. That was my first one. And then from there on, I not exclusively, but have mostly written about pieces that start from primary research. Uh, yeah. And then I go off and find kind of other experts or individuals that have relevant experience, runners and so forth. Yeah, and to tie into that, so uh, what are some of the challenges that you find now writing about, say, running, runner specific topics? Anything you could share, some of the challenges you find? And also I'm gonna ask about the rewards you find, but. Sure, yeah. well I'll actually touch on a challenge that is even, was relevant to writing our book which is that, you know, I talk all this talk about science and my love of it and everything, but there are definitely things that are open questions. I mean, most of science is still an open question. There's just leaning more towards we're pretty sure and leaning away from we're pretty sure. Um, and so I think one of the challenges is covering topics that are still in the very questionable space. Some people will claim they work for sure. Some people will claim they're total bunk. Um, mm -hmm. And the body is pretty wild. Like, you know, we have uh, placebo. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. placebo effect. Um, yeah. That's real. Your body's actually yeah. responding yeah. to it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, in any case, I think that's one of the challenges that arises in writing about some things. And we, we tried to address it in our book to some degree with a pretty balanced hand because, mm -hmm. again, like there's, there's different practitioners that feel different ways about these things. But we also wanted to make sure that 99% of our book was underpinned by 
science and like clinical practice. And so that was that was an important thing. So yeah, that's yeah. one of the challenges. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Uh, yeah, science-based is what, you know, when you're reading the description about the book, that is very important also to take into consideration. Um, you know, going through also some of the chapters, is there anything that you would say writing about specifically, was there any rewards in kind of researching certain topics that you found, oh, this benefits me, this really benefits my writing? Um, I'm sure you've uncovered a lot of new things while going into this, but um, if you could share some of those, uh, I guess, rewards, yeah, in writing this piece. I'll sort of again, answer your previous question about challenges and that another challenge, and especially when it comes to writing practical things for runners, when you're trying to tell them how to do something, is that there's there's the how and the backing that comes from sort of the doctor, and then there's the how and the backing that you actually can put into practice. And that is mm -hmm. really challenging to be both accurate, but also digestible. <laughs> like if someone tells you to like, move your meniscus or something like that's not even a thing don't use that example but, like, you will have no idea at what like what to do um but if someone says like extend your knee this is a terrible example i'm so sorry uh, maybe like mobilizing the achilles so you're like just get in there and like mobilize your achilles if yeah it's sticky. yeah that's good but like even the word mobilize you know you need to think like what does that mean does that mean rub does that mean like push you know and so yeah. trying to trying to boil that down into things that someone can put into practice is a challenge but it was it was really fun to do for this book because mm -hmm. there were so many exercises. And so even exercises that I thought I already knew how to do when I was reading the breakdown and, you know, going and bugging Emmy and Jonathan and saying, like, is this what you mean? And should they be moving this leg and that kind of thing? It was just really rewarding to feel like even more certain in some of the things that I'm already doing myself in my own running practice. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, so if you can, can you share what do readers have to look forward to in their training after reading your book? I know that's a very general question. You did touch upon some of the rewards that you experienced in writing this and learning about it. Um, but what can you say, should someone pick it up? Um, you know, maybe they've never really thought about injury prevention or treatment. Maybe they just started running. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, if you wanted to touch upon that a little bit and, and share what you think they have to look forward to in reading your book. I would say that I hope many readers are picking this up out of the prevention side of thinking because what they have to look forward to is fewer injuries because they're doing things in advance, which we do cover in the book, mm -hmm. to try to not go down these paths of dysfunction and you know poor mobility and these kinds of things. There are things you can do to activate your glutes and you know mobilize your Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so that's what I would say from the prevention side. One thing we really wanted with this book is to have it be like a reference where you can kind of, you don't necessarily have to sit down and like read it all straight through. It's more of like, oh, my knee is a little niggly. Let me open to the knee chapter. And then one thing we also really wanted is, I don't know how many times you'll like read something and it's like kind of alludes to what you should do, but it doesn't give you like tangible takeaways. And that's one thing we worked really hard to incorporate in this book is like, I want the reader to walk away from it being like, okay, I'm going to go do these three things and have like literal, like practical things that they can do. Um, and the other thing that I love about the book, and this is huge thanks to Allison and also a little bit my mom, is having it in terms that anybody can understand. So not kind of taking these like more medically complicated concepts and putting them into words that like someone off the street could pick up the book and understand and like, oh, this makes sense. Um, and I don't think the book would be as um, good at that if it weren't for your help and your editing um, and the many rounds of editing that I went through. So I will also add and pictures. So you guys have a lot of great pictures in there. Yes. Yeah. And that's a good ad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We did do a lot of pictures. Yeah, no, it's really helpful. I would say all in all, the experience itself, it, it simplified things. It was motivating to read through as well. And I would imagine for um, the overall goal, just to really make people aware that the preventative side of things, that's that's incredibly important mm -hmm. too, When especially you have big goals for your race calendar, for your health. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm, I'm very excited for everyone that gets to open this book and read it. Uh, and that leads to, um, Probably our, our final few questions here. Yeah, Emmy, if you wanted to share what, what running means to you in your life. Sure. But I do feel like it's just such a like pillar in my life. Like I honestly can't imagine where I would be in life without the sport. I feel like it's it's opened so many doors for me. I feel like I've met so many incredible people through the sport, through the community here in New York, some of my best friends in the world. My whole career really kind of um, is central to running. So I love that I've been able to take kind of my hobby and my passion and turn it into 
a career. I feel like a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So I feel just like incredibly lucky um, that that's that that path has worked out for me. And then I do love the competitive side of things. I'm not going to lie, like racing and kind of getting out there competing. I definitely have that competitive bug. I've been dealing with a few injuries the last couple of years, so I haven't been able to do that as much as I like, but have been on a pretty good stretch. Jason started uh, coaching me too. So that could be the secret is uh, working working with a coach, even if you are a coach. Jason's getting a lot of good shout yeah. outs here. Yeah. <laughs> and then the just having that outlet, even as I was kind of dealing with the injuries and getting back into running, I would say for a while, I was so grateful. Like maybe I'm not running as fast as I used to. Um, I'm not doing workouts, but just being able to get out and go for a run and have that in my life. Like I don't take it for granted. And I think mm -hmm kind of having that just like, whether it's like the chemical balance that it gets you from the serotonin and the endorphins release, just like that kind of time to process. And like me, I'm someone who's like not good at being still, but when I run, it's almost like my quiet time. Sometimes I'll leave my watch and my phone and everything at home and just go out there. I think is, is so important for my kind of mental health and being able to balance everything that, um, that comes at me in life. Allison, what does running mean to you? Yeah, it sounds like we have very similar definitions of what running means. Um, if I were to boil it down to a word, I'd say it's an outlet, but it's an outlet for so many things. It's an outlet for stress. I always feel less stressed after I run. I mean, I feel like that's a very common thing runners say, but it's just true. It's an outlet for community. I have met so many amazing people, and one of my favorite aspects of running compared to other sports is the fact that you can essentially hang out with your friends while you're doing it. When you're swimming, you can't talk to your friends. You're all underwater. If you're playing right. basketball, you're not really like hanging out. You're, you know, either playing or you're not playing. So running is really unique in that way. And, and the same as Emmy, I, I think it's an outlet for competition. I think particularly as adults, there's just not a lot of ways to do a healthy job of being competitive in the world. Some people can channel it into their careers, but not to get on a soapbox, but as women, it's harder to do that in a way that makes your life smoother and easier. And so I think running is a great way because you're only competing within yourself. You're not relying on anyone else. No one else is relying on you. Even if you don't like to compete against other humans, which, you know, I do, but uh, if, even if you don't, you can still compete with yourself and try to make your own times faster or go longer, or there's a lot of different ways to measure that. So I would say for anyone that has never started or considered running. Um, you know, I, I did want to hear maybe what you thought about for someone who is afraid to start running. You've already gave, given great examples mm -hmm. from your own lives and your own experiences. What would you have to say to someone who is, you know, interested in running but hasn't yet started? Find a friendly face. Like yeah. I, I, I think it is much easier for almost any endeavor, especially athletic endeavors, but running in particular, if you can find someone else that's doing it that you like to be around. You'll have accountability. You'll have someone to look forward to hanging out with. You'll have someone to guide you a little bit, hopefully with wise guidance, then you can pick up our book. Um, <laughs> but that would be my, my recommendation. I completely agree with that. I would also say, you know, be patient with yourself, be patient with the process. I think you can, you know, everyone's running journey is different and some people start running and are blessed with like beautiful mechanics and can just like ramp up really, really quick go from like zero to marathon essentially and other people the journey does not look like that at all and it's you know much slower kind of walk run you know maybe you're training for your first mile your first 5k but I think that all of those are okay um, and you'll find someone out there who has been through the same thing that you have so not comparing yourself to other people not giving up if maybe it's a little bit of a slower process for you compared to someone else um, and then sticking with it. I think just if you stick with it, like you will see your hard work pay off. And that's one of the most beautiful things about the sport is like, unlike other sports, I think running the black and whiteness, kind of the tangibility of it is just really, really, really cool. It's a very supportive community, a very inclusive community. And I just want to say thank you both for sharing your own stories about how you got into running, how this book came about, and just really giving any future readers that support, that pillar that if they want to take up running, that they can really find a great foundation to build uh, from this book as well. Uh, so just wanted to say thank you for today's episode and your time and contributions to keeping runners healthy and motivated in their training. Uh, I just want to say thank you again for uh, giving me the honor of being on the cover of this book.
I feel very, very honored and very blessed to be, still be part of the running community in this way and to carry on this conversation for how to keep runners healthy and just really motivated in their uh, future races or future training. So thank you both for, for uh, sharing all that you have. And thank you to Coach Kane as well, uh, that he couldn't be here, but to be just a part of this overall experience. So I'm very excited for everyone here for the upcoming uh, journey for what goes with this book. Just want to say thank you to the film crew at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and a special thank you to Will Sanchez for the invitation to be a host. This is E Song, and I got to run. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, you did it. So you're an excellent host. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Thank you. You guys really carried the conversation. That was a fun and informative episode. I had a fantastic time chatting with Allison and Emmy. I also want to recognize Will Sanchez, an honoree of the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation. Will started as a runner for an honoree in 2003 and has now come full circle as an honoree himself. With a cure on the horizon, Will is doing his part to help accelerate a cure for all those living with myeloma. Please visit Will's MMRF fundraising page and donate today. Gotta run. I just had an excellent conversation with Isan Smith and Emmy Aguilard about our book, Run Healthy. You can catch it on Will Sanchez's YouTube channel, Gotta Run. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the member of our team who did not get to be here today, Jonathan Kane. He is a fabulous coach, which I can attest to because he trained me for one of the most epic triathlons I've ever done, SOS. And he's just a good friend and actually an excellent writer as well. So Jonathan, we wish you were here to speak with us, but it, I'm sure you'll be back on Gotta Run in the future. Gotta Run. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Esong Smith for hosting us on Will Sanchez's on this episode of Gotta Run. Also, really, really great to have Allison Goldstein here with me, my co-author. We really have missed Jonathan Kane today, this book would not be possible without him. And I'm just so thankful that he's given us both this opportunity to be published. I definitely want to thank my mom, who was a huge uh, part of the writing process for me. You know, writing is not something I do that frequently as a physical therapist. And she really helps me kind of organize everything and put it into a format that Allison and Jonathan could handle and our editors could digest. Absolutely want to say thank you to Human Kinetics as well. It was really cool to just have an opportunity to kind of put pen to paper to take everything that's swimming around in my head on a daily basis as a physical therapist and a run coach and have it in you know a tangible format that I can reference and reference to patients, have you know people access. So yeah, thank you. Gotta run.